What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Enigmatica 2 Expert. Oh, yeah, guys. So I am currently in the process of making the rest of our ME controllers. Man, this takes so much stuff, so many resources, but everything is, well, I can't say everything. Pretty much everything is auto-craftable. These guys are not. I still had to make a whole bunch of these copper wires. What was it for that recipe? Uh, ME controller. Let's go back to this thing. Uh, so yeah, I had to make, oh my goodness, yeah, I need to make a bunch of these vacuum tubes which require nickel plates and these copper wires and those get put into the circuits somehow with this thing, yeah, into these circuit boards. So yeah, I was able to craft a whole lot of stuff, but, or as I had, I was able to auto craft a whole bunch of stuff. Some things are still manual yeah, and it's still going to take a little bit of time, even though we get all this stuff going now in order to get that process even started. I had to take three of our CPUs and put them together into one big multi-block here. Um, yeah, we didn't have enough crafting storage for queuing up 44 more ME controllers. Do we really need 44 more? No, but if we want to make this thing a big 7x7x7 seven by seven by seven tall uh, cube, we need 44 more of those to complete this multi-block. So, you know, I figured we'd just go ahead and do that. Now we've been lacking on auto crafting storage space. So originally we had this tower going up and I think we had it four blocks tall, three blocks tall, something like that. Anyway, I had to lay it over on its side like so. Yeah, we go eight blocks long on it. So that's using a full 32 channels. We have been trying to get to the point where we can do wireless power. Our last thing that we stopped or that we did last episode was be able to auto craft nether stars. So we needed those nether stars in order to make these nether star nuggets. All right. So if we come over here, we do this and we do this, we can make 12. We only need six. So let's just craft six of those. We'll put, I was going to space click those back in my inventory. That does not work. Okay. So we have 39 nether stars remaining or 39 nether star nuggets. So we can make four nether stars back and we get three nether star nuggets additionally. Okay, so we don't need that. Let's go back to this guy. So we need to make these things. So that's black iron slate, luminescence, and then these things. And I believe we have that stuff over here. And I think that was just regular crafting. Nothing, we didn't need to use a special crafting thing for that. Okay, so we have three of those guys. Uh, then we need the Osmeridium ingot. We have two of those. Um, this has to be done in a carpenter with liquefacted coal as well. So we need four pedestals. And we have the recipe to make five of them here. Okay, so let's put those away. This, this, that, this, that. Wait, did that have to be made in a special thing? Oh, that has to be made in a carpenter as well. Okay, so we need ourselves five buckets of liquefacted coal to make five of those pedestals. And then we need an additional five liquefacted coal to make this thing, so we need 10. Okay, so to make the liquefacted coal, we can do a magma crucible or the melter. Uh, pulverized coal turns into 100, so we are gonna need, what is that, 100 coal to make 10 buckets of it? All right, I think our carpenter we have over here and it is full of water. So let's break this so we don't put more water in it. We're gonna break this. We'll place this thing back. I think I can just right click on this with the reservoir. Okay, very good. Let's do that guy, these, and that one. Okay, so we'll wait for this thing to finish up or we can just do it this way and speed it up a little bit. Okay, so there's five of the pedestals. So then we have five buckets of liquefacted coal remaining. Oh, that's right. We have the plus button here. So I can just press that and I don't have to manually place the items in there. Okay, so there's that. Uh, we need four pedestals and then two of these Osmeridium. And there we go. There's a crafting core. Crafting core plus a pedestal. That's awesome. All right, let's put this thing back so we're still making... Uh, what is, what are we making here? Cotton? Okay, we'll place this back and that'll fill back up with the water. That's fine. We can clear this thing out. Cool. So we got some progress made here. So now that we have these items, get rid of that, uh, 
we are now able to make charged draconium blocks, but it does require a heck of a lot of power in order to do this, but we are able to craft it at this point. So power storage is the next thing, power storage and being able to pipe that amount of power into this crafting table. Um, so we have upgraded our reactor. We are making 32,000. I think this goes all the way up to about 47,000 when it's uh, outputting its maximum, but we're not storing this power really anywhere. And to make each one of these is how much? We need 2 billion RF at 10 million RF FE per second that or per tick. That is so much power. Um, I think we made ourselves one of the, what do they call energy cell? No, the ones from thermal. What are these things called? Ener yeah, they're just called energy cell. I thought we had like a top tier one. Have we never made one of those? I felt like we did. This doesn't say, oh, I guess we haven't. No, no, no. Cause that's really expensive, isn't it? Okay, so yeah, we've never made one of those. I think we might've made one of the lesser ones, maybe the Signalum or something. Well, that's not gonna be enough. So what other ways are there for us to store power in this pack? I think that's something I just need to figure out real quick. Okay guys, so I have been doing some things off camera here, trying to figure out what it is that we wanna do for power storage. This mod pack has a few options in it, but I've narrowed it down to two different ones. So we have Ender IO capacitor banks, right? So we have these guys, uh, the, the lowest tier holds 10 million. I'm not sure exactly what the transfer rate is on these, but I know you can stack them together to make a big multi-block and that increases your input output per face, right? So we could make a whole bunch of these if we wanted to. One of the lowest tier capacitor banks does require four of the basic capacitors, which is for these redstone transmission coils, some of the grains of infinity, HV capacitor, which requires all this, and MV, which requires all this. <sighs> okay, so that's gonna require a lot of treated wood planks, essentially, plus a whole bunch of other resources and all of this stuff. Like, we could do this method, unless there's another way. No, I don't think there is any other way to craft those. So that's one thing. Uh, the second tier, this holds 50 million RF, right? So we could do that. That takes a double layer capacitors, which is again, more of the single layer ones, which requires all this stuff. Uh, I don't think we can do the vibrant ones. We need to do the octatic capacitors and that's what we're trying to make right now. So we'd have to make a whole bunch of the middle tier capacitor banks if we're going to do this. So that is one method. The other method is we can use mechanism. So mechanism has this stuff here, the induction matrix, I think is what it's called. So the induction matrix is a multi-block. You have to surround the outside with this induction casing stuff. So some steel and redstone gold and enriched iron with redstone. So it's not like super, super expensive. Um, but, you said, but yeah, we're gonna need a few of these induction casings for the outside. Uh, the edges all have to be made out of the induction casing. The faces can be induction casing or it can be uh, the induction ports. That you need at least two ports, one to insert power, one to extract power. And then inside the multi-block, you can put in these induction cells, each of them hold different amounts of power. And then the induction providers, the providers are what allow the amount of power to be transferred at a time. So this ultimate induction provider right here says it can output 13.1 million RF per tick. Yeah. So we needed 10 million, this does 13, this seems like what I wanna do. And then we can store, this holds two point, or 204, I guess, giga RF? Is that, is that billion RF? So that might be what we wanna do. We can add a whole lot of these ultimate induction cells in there and boost the amount of power that we can store in there. We can also add more of these induction providers to increase the amount of transfer if we want to increase it beyond 13. I think one of these, and maybe, I don't know, I'm not exactly sure how many of these we need. We could make like four of them and just throw them in there, five of them, throw them in there, uh, and just you know call it good for a while. That might be something that we do. 
Um, but yeah, I was looking at the recipes for these things. So the ultimate induction cell, more of these energy tablets, and it requires four of the previous tier and an ultimate energy cube. So we have to go through like these different recipes all the way down <laughs> in order to make these things. So yeah, we're gonna need a lot of the steel casings, which I'm not sure if that's gonna be a big deal or not. We'll have to figure that out. And then the induction cells require, you know, all these different things, some lithium dust. So that's a thing that we're gonna have to keep under consideration. And then the induction providers is, yeah, it's kind of the same thing. We need the previous tier of the providers and more of those cells. And yeah, we'll have to figure this out. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make the auto crafting recipes for all of these. I'll see what it costs to make these things and if it seems reasonable enough and how much stuff that we're gonna have to collect. Yeah, it's a lot of crafting patterns that we are gonna have to make, but you know, it's fine. We have the auto crafting capabilities. We might as well start using it. Um, so yeah, let me go ahead and get all of the patterns set up for this. Uh, we're gonna need the induction port and again, a bunch of these casings. We'll have to figure out how many we need of those. But yeah, let me go ahead and get those going and we'll be back guys. Okay, so a bunch of these patterns have been made now, and we have ultimate induction cell, which requires all the other ones. Then we have the ultimate induction provider, which requires all these other ones, and uh, these ultimate energy cubes. Um, yeah, we had to make a pattern for the energy tablet, the induction port, and the induction casing. So I've already made those two things. Those aren't a big deal. Uh, so the ultimate parts here, ultimate. So if we wanted to make the ultimate induction cell, we have everything available, but look at that, 1,700 gold, 2,500 redstone, like lots of things. It's gotta make almost 400 steel. We gotta turn those into plates. We gotta make atomic alloys, it's not a big deal. A bunch of those energy tablets. Uh, and then that's gonna require 17,000 bytes for storing that recipe. Uh, so we can't quite do that unless I stack one of our processors again like I did before. So the ultimate induction provider, if we wanna craft this, uh, this also is gonna to cost too much, too much to store. Is this, wait, was that the same one that I just said? No, this one requires ultimate control circuits. So this is one that, they're not super expensive, but we can't auto craft those just yet. Well, I guess we could, we just don't have it set up to be auto crafting. So I just put in uh, 10 elite circuits into the middle thing, and then I put in 10 of the atomic alloys around the outside. And here we go, here's our 10 ultimate. Well, I guess we don't necessarily need 10 of those, but I made 10 of those just so we have extras for the future. So if I wanted to make one of these, we now have everything available to do it. So did that require anything crazy? No, actually this requires a whole lot less resources than the other one, doesn't it? Uh, still a lot of steel that we gotta make though. Okay, well, I guess we'll go ahead and queue that one up. We can craft it. We can't craft the other one, and probably we shouldn't craft the other one until this one's done. So yeah, we're gonna spend a little bit of time here. Well, I'm gonna spend time anyway, waiting for this one to finish up. Uh, it might be about time that we upgrade our crafting things downstairs. Now I said in the last clip that I spent some time off camera deciding how I wanted to do our power storage. Yeah, so I hooked up the rest of our ME controller. So we have this thing completely set up now. It's absolutely unnecessary at this point for us to have the full <laughs> controller, but you know what? I, I figured since we crafted it, let's just go ahead and hook it up. So I expanded out that room down there, I removed the floor, and I'm still deciding if I like this or not. Now, one of the biggest problems is this wall over here <laughs> needs to be pushed back like one block. Yeah, that kind of stinks. But aside from that, uh, I think I kind of like it. It breaks up the room a little bit. Uh, and like when we, come down here and we wanna go somewhere, we can just go up these stairs, right? So uh, aside from this being kinda in the way, we can move that over to the side or whatever, and we gotta figure out these wires and stuff. I don't know, I'm gonna kinda play around with this for a little while. I might r undo this and just make it so like they're just straight walls with a glass floor so we can see down there or something. Haven't quite decided yet, but anyway, that was one of the things I was just kinda playing around with while I was trying to decide how I wanted to uh, set up our power storage. But anyway, I'm gonna let that finish up uh, the auto craft. That's gonna take a little bit of time. And then I will queue up the other one after I stack one of our processors on top of each other. And then yeah, we probably should look at upgrading these to 64Ks. That'll be, that'll be something that we do in the future. But anyway, 
I'm going to go ahead and let this finish up, and we'll be back, guys. All right, guys, so we have everything together now. So in order to get this thing going, we have to place the ultimate induction cell and the induction provider inside the multi-block, and it has to be surrounded by these induction casings like I was talking about earlier. So I think for right now, we're just going to place this three blocks away from the reactor. Yep, the all the, the corners and the top... Well, I guess like all the edges has to be this casing, like I said. So yeah, we got a multi-block structure that looks something like that. It's not like, it's not amazing. <laughs> it's pretty gray. Nothing fancy about it. Then we can put these purple items in the induction provider. So we'll put that here. It doesn't matter which order you put them in. And then induction cell. Oh, you know what? The um, That should be filled too. Okay. So the induction cell, this is what's actually storing the power that goes in there. Now we need the induction ports to extract power and to insert power. We're going to insert power from this side of the reactor. And then everything else needs to be filled up with these blocks. Now you know you've done it right when you place everything together and you get those particle effects. Yep. So the multi-block has formed. It does the same thing when you do, I think it's the solar evaporator. Anyway. You can right click on it now and you can see stuff. You can see that it holds 204 GRF, which I think that's billion RF, right? Um, and then you can switch between RF, EU, Tesla, I think, joules. Yeah, so however you want to see this, obviously we want to see RF because that's the main power that we use. Uh, so now we need to get this thing so it's going to be hooked up into our main power supply. So we're going to extract power here. I can't remember... Oh, look at that. It has negative Fe in it. Did both of them say that? Yeah, they do. I can't remember if you have to smack this with a wrench to change it from input to output. We should probably find that out real quick. Doesn't look like... Ah, oh, man. I think there's a mechanism, spe mechanism specific wrench. Hmm. You know what? Let's hook up the input and we'll see if it gains power and then we'll just assume... Oh, yeah. It's got the statistics on it, too. I forgot about this. Yeah, we'll just assume that uh, if it can insert power, we can extract power. How about that? Okay, so we're going to move this. Well, I guess we're going to remove this. And then we're going to remove that as well. I want to swap that with a reactor casing here. So we'll do that. And then we're going to do the same thing. Swap that with this guy. There we go. So now the reactor is off. I guess we need to go turn this thing back on. And I don't have a way to do that from down here. So let's come up. Hook a hole, turn this thing on. The computer's still trying to do stuff. Yep, all right, we're good. So we should be generating power, but that power shouldn't be going anywhere. So now if we connect this, we should start filling up all the power. Yeah, it looks like we are inputting power. Yeah, input. We're not outputting any power, but we are inputting. Does it say how much? Receiving 42,000 per tick. Here we go, and then outputting zero. Okay, so we want to take this and somehow connect that back over to where this was connected previously. I guess we'll break out that and do this. Okay, so if we go back to statistics, it still says we're outputting nothing, but we are receiving power. Um... So I feel like that thing isn't outputting properly. I think we do have to connect it some way. Hmm. Okay. Well, I know that mechanism has like a configurator. Do we have a configurator already made? I don't think so. We need to get ourselves wireless crafting terminal. That's something that I've been really wanting to make. We just haven't gotten around to it yet. Yes, we do have a configurator. Okay, so this thing, you can scroll, wrench, rotate, wrench. Okay, I think we might need to smack that with this wrench in order to change it to an output mode. Let's try. Shift right click. It doesn't seem to do anything. Okay, well, I don't know why we're not outputting power then. If that's connected to the same power as everything else, we should be drawing some power... But it says we're not outputting anything. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why that is. I'm going to have to play around with this for a little bit. There might be something else that I'm missing here. Aha. So it's not just put it into wrench mode. There's a configurate energy. Yeah. 
So shift right click with configure energy sets that to red. That should do it. Now we get power. Yeah, now we're outputting power. Okay. Well, I was almost there. I didn't realize there was a configure energy specific <laughs> for this thing. So yes, now we got that all sorted. Uh, so power is now uh, going to where it needs to be. I don't think we need this much cryo stabilized. I believe I put this cryo stabilized like this. So it could go over to our, the resource miner. So I think we can recover a bunch of that cryo stabilized, swap that back out for the uh, lesser valuable redstone energy flux duct. So I might end up doing that. But anyway, we are now able to store power here. Uh, we are, we're making more power than what we're using. So any additional power that we make uh, should be stored into here. But unfortunately, we're not making a whole lot more power than what we need. So yeah, <laughs> uh, we're, what is that? 16% of the way of where we need to be in order to make one draconium infused block. Uh, or I guess the, um, charged draconium block. So, okay. Well, we are making progress. We're storing power. I guess the next thing we should do is look at increasing our extreme reactor here. Fill in these four spots with more of our reactor control rods. That should increase reactivity, which I think would also help with fuel efficiency. And it's also, I mean, adding in those other rods are just going to boost the amount of power this thing makes. Anyway, once we do that, I'm not really sure what else we're going to do to this reactor to make more power. Obviously, we can make it taller. We can make it bigger. And I'm not sure if I want to make it much bigger, but we could probably make it taller. So that might be something that we look at. Uh, so yeah, let me see if I can go ahead and look at filling in our reactor with a few more of these pieces. See if we got everything together to do that. I'm not, I don't remember how tall we made this thing. We go down, it goes down to right there. So one, two, three, four, five. So we need 24, 20 more Eulorium fuel rods and then four more of the control rods. So let me see if we can make that increase the production of our reactor and we'll be right back. All right, so more off-camera stuff. I uh, went to the end. I got a whole bunch of end stone. I think it was something like 9,000 of it. Yeah, anyway, I just put it through our automatic sieve over here. Yeah, I noticed that this got an update. Uh, I've updated to, I think it's the latest version of the pack. The latest recommend is like 1.63 or something. Anyway... Uh, this thing now goes in kind of a circle. It's got a nice animation before it just kind of went back and forth. Now it kind of does a nice little circle. I like it. Anyway, uh, so I noticed that. Um, so I decided to do some upgrades here. Our Ender IO conduit, while that did transfer items, uh, it would transfer kind of slow. It doesn't burst. Like it wasn't trying to do it every tick. It's trying to do it like, I don't know, every... 40 ticks. It seemed like it only grabbed it like every two seconds or something. Uh, so I switched over to the ultimate logistical transporter from Mechanism. This does exactly what we wanted to do. It transfers those items really fast over. Um, and then the other thing that I noticed is that you can use this time in a bottle on this. And you can visually see that it does work. And just one click on there makes it go faster. So yeah, <laughs> you can go all the way up and go crazy with it and it processes or super, super, super fast. Um, so that's something that I didn't notice. I was able to chew through all of that really, really quickly. Yeah. And then we got a lot of the uranium ready to go. So we're up to 5,000 right now. And I think, are we done with the ores? Yeah, we're done chewing through those ores. Uh, looks like we're done with the grit too. All right. So that's just all finished up right now. So we're up to 5,400 uranium. That's pretty good. Um, so anyway, the reactor, I did end up making the other control rods and the fuel rods. I did not extend the size of the reactor. I just filled those all in. And now we're making 74,000 RF per tick, which is really good. Yeah, we can increase this further. Like I said, if we want to make the reactor taller, I really don't think I'm gonna make it any bigger, um, but yeah. So anyway, that's all going into here. We now have 2.2 GRF which is billion RF, right? So looking at this, in order to make the charged draconium, uh, we need two billion RF 
Yeah, because it goes KMG, right? So Kilo Mega Giga. So yeah, that's billion here. And we have the required amount of power, which is pretty awesome. So we should be able to do this. Uh, let's grab, oh, you know what? I am going to need another power cable, I think. And then we're going to need the draconium, of course. I don't know how long this is going to take, but we have the draconium. And then we need the cryo-stabilized flux ducts, I suppose, since we need to move like 10 million RF per tick to get this thing going. Okay, so I think with this thing, you can just connect the power anywhere. I think that works, right? Yeah, so it's got 50, yeah, 50 million FE in there. And then it should get all the FE that it needs. Then we can put this somewhere nearby. I think we right click one onto here. Or do we just put it over here? One pedestal, no recipe found. Now, when we look at this, it does say there's one here and then one here. So it seems like you should be able to put one on top of this and maybe, oh, there we go. Okay, so now we're now we're cooking. Yeah, we're using power really fast. <laughs> uh, and it's processing this. Okay, yeah, we completed it. So we have pretty much no power left in our thing. And we now have two... It's hard to click on that. I guess I need to set this up better. But yeah, we have two charged draconium blocks. That's awesome. Okay, so a little bit of work. We got this going. We now have a battery for our base, which is fantastic. We have only up until this point been using the power that we're generating. Now we can just generate all sorts of power and store it, and then we can use all that power later when we need it. That's great. Okay, so we can get rid of all of those. So octanic capacitors... Um, yeah, they require the, the charge recruiting blocks. So we'll be able to make that. And then we want to make this dimensional transceiver. This guy, this is what's going to allow us to make the flux cores. Yeah. So once we make, once we make the dimensional transceiver, we can put that through a seg mill, make the flux cores. And I believe once we have those flux cores, we can, yeah, do this recipe to get more flux cores. So as long as we always have one flux core, we never have to do this process again. <laughs> okay, well, that's the next step. I'm going to go ahead and work on that. We should have everything we need to make this. Pretty sure there's nothing special here. We've seen all of this stuff before. Okay, so let me go ahead. Oh, you know what? Maybe we didn't make the quantum entangle of Porter because that required a heart. Do we still have a heart? Yeah, we have the one dragon heart. Uh, anything else special about this teleporter frames? We can do that. We can do all of this. Matter beam machine frame. We can do that. We've done that many times. Okay. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. We'll use the one dragon heart that we have. Yeah, I think that'll be pretty awesome. Okay, let me do that and we'll be back. So one of the last things that's holding us back from making this dimensional transceiver, yep, is this ender crystal. So in order to make that, we have to make a soul binder. So this is a new ender IO machine that we haven't made in this pack. And we have to have a soul vial with an enderman in it with a vibrant crystal. The vibrant crystal is just vibrant alloy around an emerald. That's not a big deal. And then obviously you just take a soul vial, you right click on an enderman, and you get the soul of the enderman in there. So I just went back to the end again soul vials we got a few of them with endermen unfortunately these don't stack the ones with the shulkers do these are the ones that we found in chests and whatnot so they're exactly the same i don't know why these don't they're not considered exactly the same since they're just regular endermen that spawn in the world but you know whatever it's fine so we have an enderman i guess i already had one in my inventory an enderman in a soul vial plus a vibrant alloy or a vibrant crystal um, and then we have everything together now to make ourselves a soul binder. So let's go ahead and craft that. Yep. I had to go and make another one of those, what is it called? Simple machine chassis is not so simple to make because it requires a hardened cell frame, which is a whole annoying process. Uh, so yeah, I just went ahead and made that. Hey, we got a quest complete. So we'll throw that guy over here. Uh, so one thing I did notice, like I said, I upgraded this pack. One thing I did notice, these capacitors now, they no longer have that text on them 
where you got to kind of like figure out, is this the correct one that goes in this machine or whatever? Uh, I don't know if it was a mod that was added to this pack or if that's just a change for Ender IO, but they now just tell you what they do. So this globally increases the level of the machine to 3.58 and an energy buffer 4.05. We don't have one specific to the soul binder. So this is the capacitor that we are going to use in here. So, oh wow, that uses 11.9 KRF per tick. That's a little expensive, I guess. Uh, so I'll put that in here, that in here, and then that requires six levels of experience. So I'll go ahead and give it that. And there is our ender crystal. Awesome. So now we should have everything together in order to make this. Yeah, previously I had put this capacitor in here thinking that this was good for the alloy smelter. Apparently that's for a sterling generator. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> I think it's much better that it just tells you what it is and you have to like cryptically try and figure it out. Um, so Ender Crystal goes there. We can now make this. We have everything ready to go. I have to make two of those octatic capacitors. So there's our dimensional transceiver. Do we get a quest complete for that? We should, because it really feels like we needed one. <laughs> All right, so now that that's done, again, we can take, oops, yeah, we take that and then we put it into the sag mill and we get 32 flux cores. Oh my goodness, this is what we've been waiting for for forever. Just go ahead and do it. Oh my goodness, how many grinding balls does this thing use? Holy. Do we get more than 32 from that? Nope, just 32. <laughs> All right, so now that we got the flux cores, I feel like we should get a quest complete for that thing too, but I guess not. Uh, so we have that done, that done. Now we can make ourselves flux point. Uh, we also need to make ourselves, oh man, what's the thing called? Flux plug. Okay, so the flux plug is these flux cores around a flux block, which is flux and flux cores. We don't have enough flux. So I believe if this is the same as every other one, you just drop a uh, redstone into lava. So let me grab a bucket. You know what? Let me make a regular bucket. I keep using all the buckets that we have and I never have enough to do what I want to do. Whoops, what did I just do? There we go. Okay, so there's a bucket. Uh, let's grab some lava. We're just gonna do this outside because I can't do it in here. So there's lava and there's redstone. Okay, <laughs> how do you get flux in this pack? Obtained by throwing redstone in fire or lava. Well, that, they just lied to me. So we need a block of black quartz surrounded by redstone uh-huh okay so i figured that it probably wasn't going to be that simple this pack has all sorts of recipes change but that's the way you're supposed to make it how we got do we have black quartz we do all right we got plenty of that let me just go ahead and make that much we'll take some redstone we'll do some of this action so there's a bunch of flux all right now we don't have to worry about that for quite some time Getting back to the flux plug, we wanna make the flux block. So there's that. And then we take that and we surround it by more of those things. So there's a flux plug. And then flux points are gonna be, oh, I clicked the wrong one. So the flux point is the same thing except to run a block of redstone. Okay, so flux plug, uh, we can place on the power sending and then flux points we place on the power receiving. Now, before we get too far in this, I would like to make more of these things so I don't ever run out. So obsidian, we have plenty of obsidian. We just made a whole bunch of that flux. Okay, and then we can place more in there and make more of these things all day long. As long as we don't run out of these things, we should be fine. So I might wanna just like hide one somewhere so I never use it. Maybe I can put it in my ender pouch or something. <laughs> it's just a safety precaution. Uh, so flux point, yeah, we're gonna want a bunch of these. No, that's the wrong one, flux point. I don't know, that's, that's plenty. We only really need one flux plug and then a flux controller is also a very good thing to have. So that requires us to have five of these blocks. 
Okay, like so. There's a flux controller, flux plug, flux points. We should be pretty much good to go. So at this point, we might be able to just disconnect this completely. We're going to put the flux plug here. Uh, we need to name this thing. We'll just call this power out. That's fine. Name. Oh, I have to create a network. Edit network. Create a new network. You know what? We'll just call it that. That's fine. Create that. Um, this is called power out. We need to select this network. And on one of these pages, you should be able to... Oh, man. They changed this, huh? There should be a way where you can say unlimited priority transfer limit. Enable limit true. False. So we're going to be able to send as much power as we can possibly send through that. So let's get rid of this thing. Now for right now, I'm going to just delete all that stuff. And I'm just going to put a point right here. But eventually we'll probably get rid of all of this cabling around here. So this one point will select the network, this one. And then transfer limit false. So it should be able to take all the power that we could possibly want and wirelessly send it there. So we should be using power. Yeah, we're outputting power that's going to the base, doing everything the base needs with it. Uh, so we no longer have to have power, or I guess power wires connected anywhere. This is gonna open up a lot of possibilities. So one of the things I really would have been wanting to do is over here, this thing, our, uh, our empowerer, this thing has been driving me crazy. It's constantly out of power all the time. So we can just put like one flux point right here. Like so, no limit. And then swap these power cables out for these cryo stabilize, and that should give it all the power that it should ever need. Yes, that is gonna be something that's gonna be super helpful here in the future. I guess since that's connected, we can get rid of this thing. Yeah, that's gonna help us clean up a lot of these power cables around and yeah, that's gonna be so much better, guys. All right, I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap the episode up here for today. I'm gonna do some off camera stuff, try and get some things situated a little bit better. But yeah, I think we got a lot of good stuff done today. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.